We Kenyans love books. We love to study. You go get your diploma, and then you go further your studies, you get a bachelor, you get the PhD, you get a doctorate. And the problem with the Kenyan market is that you rarely get a job. So most of you just go ahead and settle for less. To settle for something you don't love. You settle for something you don't even wish for. The world has a lot to offer. You don't just have to work in Kenya. Many of you know of the US, the UK, but how many know of Austria? Hi guys, a very good evening to you wherever you are and welcome back. If you're new to this channel, this is Huku Austria, your number one decorative channel with your number one host, Masiwa Austria. So today guys, I left work earlier and the weather is nice. I'm in the mood of so giving you more of the good stuff. So after work, I just came to the town Town center is like uh, two minutes walk from here and this is the place where we always chill. In summer this place is always full. Let me just show you around. The weather is nice today so everybody's getting outside. We're just enjoying the life. Guys, today we are going to continue with our series How to Relocate to Austria. This is the third part of the series. If you missed the first two, please go onto my description box and you'll get the link to head there. Or you can as well go to my playlist, How to Relocate to Austria, and you'll get all the three series. On our today's series on how to relocate to Austria, I'm going to talk about the EU Blue Card. And before I go into the EU Blue Card, I want to explain to you how the healthcare system in Austria works. Well, Austria has one of the best healthcare systems in the world. And uh, almost 99% of the residents in Austria have the same social insurance. So what happens is, if you work, if you register for a job, your employer has to register you for the social insurance. You don't even have to do anything. Once you get a job, all you have to do is uh, give your details to your employer and your employer is going to register you for the social insurance. So, how does the social insurance work? Well, you get a card like this. Let me show you. Once you are registered, you get a card like mine with your picture on it, with your name and your social security number. And if you need to go to the doctor or if you are sick, you go to the hospital, you just issue the card and you don't have to pay for anything because you are totally covered with the card. So that is how it works if you are working. What about those who don't work? Let's say you are a pensionist or maybe you, are, you have a maternity leave or maybe you are sick for a couple of months. If this is the case, you can still enjoy the benefits because uh, when you are working, you will be paying for the funds. And in this time, maybe you are not sick. So the funds will be taken and uh, when you are sick or when you go to the pension, you will be getting the benefits in any way. So also those who get the benefits free for free are the children. If the parents are insured, the children, and if your spouse is, let's say you come with your girlfriend or your, not girlfriend, but you come with your wife or your husband, and one of you is not working. As long as one person is uh, working and paying the insurance, the other person will automatically also be insured. So, if you want to come with your spouse, 
and you are legally married, then, then one of you is working and the other one is not working, both of you will be covered. What does the health insurance in Austria cover? The health insurance covers almost everything. So if you are sick, you go to the doctor, you won't pay for a single dime. If you have maternity leave, you will be getting the benefits, like we talked about it in the part two, the eight weeks you get full salary, and then afterwards you are still paid, even though you are not working and paying for anything. Then if you, let's say you are working and you have an accident and you can't work for a couple of months, you will still be receiving your salary, not to 100%, but you will still be covered. So all these things are covered by the social insurance. And then if you also need aids, like let's say I break my legs and I need a wheelchair or I need a, what is it called? This thing, this stick for walking. We call it Krupen in German. I don't know what it's called. No, crutches. You need crutches. You don't have to pay for the crutches from your salary or from your um, pocket because you will get all these aids from the social security. <laughs> also, if you are mentally ill and you need uh, a psychiatrist visit, all these things are covered by the insurance. And in case of emergencies, let's say you are, for, for example, I am asthmatic, so there have been times when I had asthma and uh, one time the spray didn't help me. So I called the ambulance and they were there within five to seven minutes. And they take care of you, they take you to the hospital and all these bills, you don't pay even a single cent. Also, if the doctor prescri prescribe you some medicines, the medicines you get it's much cheaper let's say you get a prescription you go to the pharmacy to buy the medicine or you want to buy without a prescription without a prescription you're going to pay at least double of what it would cost you with the prescription so some of the good things about the insurance in austria it covers so much stuff the insurance covers so much stuff. Let's say you are a woman and you need to go to a gynecologist. It doesn't cost you. I mean, there are some there are some stuff you are going to pay for, but some of most of the things you don't have to pay for. Even if you go to the dentist to get a checkup, it costs. It's it doesn't cost you anything. And then in Austria, you just don't leave and go to a doctor to a specialist. Everybody has a general practitioner, so in case of anything, you just go to your general practitioner and if you need a specialist, he will write your prescription to get to a specialist. You can't just leave and say, okay, now I need to go to a dentist. Let's say you need to go to ophthalmologist. You, don't, you just don't uh, call the ophthalmologist and tell them you need an appointment. You, have to, you should have a prescription from your doctor, from your general practitioner. So with this uh, prescription, you can go to your specialist. You always need an appointment. For example, you just don't leave in the morning and say, okay, now I'm going to the doctor. You always call them, even if you are sick, you just call in the morning and ask and tell them, okay, I'm sick today, I don't feel well, what time can I come over? And they will give you an, a, a, an appointment. And uh, if you want to get a general practitioner, depending on where you are, you can look for them in the internet. You just, there is also a dog finder. Yeah, that's where I always look because I have moved several times within Austria. It's crazy how many times I've moved. So every time you move, you always need a new general practitioner. So what you do, I always go to docfinder.com and then you give your address or at least uh, the town where you are, the region, and then it will give you several who are next to you, who are near the place you are. They will give you the telephone number, you call, 
Arabic. They'll show you which languages the doctors speak. Romani Romania, um, Yugoslavia, German, English. So depending on which language you need, let's say you want an English speaking general practitioner, you just go type the doctor and then you can call and make a, make an appointment with the doctor. Having a general practitioner is important because at least your doctor will know you. They will know the, which sickness you have. They will know you better than the specialist. So that is why you always have a general practitioner and if in case you have a problem or anything, they just send you to a specialist. Also, you just don't leave and go to a hospital. If you are going to a hospital, it's, let's say it's an emergency at night, then it's okay to go to the hospital. Or if it's on Saturday, on Sunday, and the doctors are closed, then you can go to a hospital. But uh, you just don't leave in the morning because you have malaria symptoms or anything and go to the hospital. You always go to your general practitioner and if he can't help you further, he will send you to a specialist or he'll give you a pres prescription to go to the hospital for further checkups. And if you have a prescription from your doctor, you can still go ahead to a doc finder and search for a specialist. Maybe you are searching for a dentist, you just go to doc finder and then it will show you which doctor you need at what place. And then you just give the details and then you get all the doctors around. So you will even see the services that the doctor provides. All right, guys, let's talk about the EU Blue Card now. Who is eligible for EU Blue Card? EU Blue Card, you can apply for it if you have been to a university. If you have studied for at least three years, you can apply for this EU Blue Card. So the requirements are you have finished studies and then you have a job offer in Austria. And like I said before, we are going to talk about uh, looking for a job in the next series. So you need the studies and then you need a job offer. For the job offer, you need to be earning an average amount that uh, should be earned on the job. Let me just check the figures. It is uh, in 2023. It is 45,595 gross annual salary. So I went ahead and uh, calculated how much is it going to be per month. Per month, before tax, it should be 3,263. And after taxation, it's 2,263 euros and 47 cents euros. So that is the amount you should be earning and don't be intimidated by the figures because this is just a normal salary. So getting a job with that salary will not be hard. So you just need to be to have finished your studies and then you need a job offer and the job should be paying you the amount that I've just stated. Oh, and with the EU blue card, you don't need the points. If you check my part two video, you will know that uh, they need, uh, for the red, white, red card, they need points. But for the EU blue card, you don't even need points. So that's even more advantage. There is an exception if you are in the IT branch. If you are in the IT, you do not only need the three years studies, but you also should have worked for another three years. I think the reason why they put it like this is because they have so many people really in the IT. That's just what I think. I'm not so sure. So the requirement for this job is you need a passport. You need a photograph, passport size photograph which shouldn't be older than six months. You need a proof of health insurance and we've talked about health insurance before. So once you get a job, a contract, 
your employer is going to cut off for your insurance and then you need a proof of degree with a minimum duration of three years so you should have studied for at least three years and your cv of course and if you are married let's say you are married or you have children with whom you want to take with you then you'll need marriage certificate you should be legally married because otherwise in austria if you are not legally mar legally married it's just a come we stay they don't recognize that as a marriage so you should be legally married with the marriage certificate or certificate of divorce if you are divorced maybe you'll come over here then you get to know somebody new and you want to marry then you'll need a certificate of divorce certificate of adoption if you are with the babies that you adopted and evidence of certificate of family relationship i don't know what they mean by that maybe but certificate of your kids or something so on the procedure So the procedure of applying for the EU blue card, you need uh, to have finished studies and then you need uh, a job. So you just apply a job and once you receive a job, a contract letter from your job or from your employer, you go ahead to the Austrian embassy with the required uh, document and uh, the embassy is going to send your document to ams or ims ims is the public employment service in austria so what i can recommend is always have all the documents because if you have all the documents this will make their work easier if you don't have some documents this is the reason why some people don't get visa because they just try doing things and uh, some documents are missing and you know they have a lot of work to do so they have to check if you have all the documents and this is how you don't get a visa because you don't have everything they need so you go to the embassy you bring all the documents required and the embassy will send your documents to austria to ams or the public employment service AMS is going to check your documents and see if you have everything required and if your documents are complete they are going to issue you with a working permit this is very very important because whatever for whatever job you want your papers has to go to the AMS and the AMS is the one that provides you with a working permit. And in Austria, if you don't have a working permit, there is no way you are going to work in Austria. A visa is important, yeah. But the most important thing, if you want to come through job, is the working permit. So make sure you have all the documents. And then if you go to apply, and then if you have all the documents, you will then receive your visa so once the ams provide you with a working permit your papers will then be sent back your papers will then be sent back to the embassy and the embassy will go ahead and check again if the other requirements have been issued and then you get your visa so once you get your visa you, then, you can then come to austria the eu blue card will also be noted will also be given for only two years so why do this austrian only give you visa for two years it is because they want you to make a good reputation to your employer and also 
these two years you'll be paying the social security we talked about and afterwards let's say you are sick god forbid it or in case of anything you lose your job or you can't work you know you will have paid for the social security and you can then get help from the system what they don't want is that you come over here and then you totally depend on them without even contributing to it so for what if you work for at least two years they will know that at least you have contributed and if you need uh, to if you need to continue working there is uh, this red white red plus visa which is which you can apply for afterwards and the red white red plus visa is it's easier to get other uh, it's easier to get because you will already be in austria you will have a job and even if you don't have a job it's easier to get a job when you are already in austria than when you are outside like in Kenya or any other country. The AUE blue card visa costs 160 euros. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope it was helpful and resourceful. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you on the next video and as usual now pedanyote all right guys now i'll introduce you to waltz which is austrian music and i'll take you with me for a walk enjoy this beautiful city
The blue train, also known as Meridia, is a German train. Since we don't stay far away from Germany, it's common to see German trains. Also, some Austrian trains go to Germany. Thank you so much for tuning in to Hugo Austria, your number one diaspora YouTube channel, and I was your host, Masiwa Austria.